Hi, my name's Janet and I'm the Technical Officer in Print Media at Sydney College of the Arts. And I'm Beck. I'm one of the academics and I also teach in the print media area at Sydney College of the Arts. And today we're going to be showing you how to do some monoprinting. Um, on a normal day we would use the presses that we've got in the print rooms to be printing monoprints with, but we wanted to show you how to do some monoprinting from home. You'll need a few basic things. The first thing that you'll need is an area that you can roll up on, so a glass slab is really good. Or if you haven't got a big glass slab like this, which you probably don't, you can use any smooth non-porous surface like a sheet of acetate even, or a sheet of perspex works really well because it's a bit more rigid. Something that you can roll the ink up on and clean it off afterwards. A few of the other things that you'll need are some ink. So we're going to be using Akua ink. It's a water-based ink, which means it'll be a lot easier to clean up with. You can use an oil-based ink, but then you will have to use a solvent or an oil to clean up with. The other thing that you'll need is a spatula to be able to take your ink out of the container. You'll also need a roller. We're just using these little speedball rollers today. These are fairly inexpensive and you can purchase these from most art supply shops. I've got a couple of different sizes that we'll be using today, so you'll see how that works. And the other thing that you'll need is a barren. These barrens are used to take the ink from the slab to be able to put it onto your paper. So that, this is a tool you can buy from an art supply shop and it is reasonably inexpensive. But if you don't want to go to the trouble of buying something like this, you can use the back of a wooden spoon or we also have this bamboo barren and these are really inexpensive and again available from most art supply shops. And really it's just something smooth and hard that you can apply pressure with. So you're, instead of using a press, you're using the pressure of your hand to, to take the impression from your ink slab. So we're going to show you a few different techniques of doing some monoprints. They're really simple ones, but beyond that, you can take it wherever you want. You can really expand on what we've shown you today. So I've got these feathers that I've just found outside, and I'm going to ink these up and take an impression of them. You need to think about which side of the feather that you actually want to get the impression from. And the first thing that we'll do is we need to take some ink out of the container and make ourselves a little slab on our glass tabletop. So to take the ink out of the container, you just carefully take some off the top. You're not digging down into your container. You also don't need a lot for this process. You'll find that the less ink that you use, the better your print will be. So when you take your ink out of the container, you just give it a bit of a massage to start with, and this will smooth out any lumps that you might have in your ink, but it also helps it to manoeuvre a little bit better. You'll find, especially in winter, that your ink can be quite stiff. So this just helps it to flow a little bit better when you're inking up. So once you've done that, you'll take a small amount onto your spatula and you'll make a little line that's usually about the length of your roller. If you go anything further than that, you're just wasting ink. Now it's probably worth noting here because I know some of you might be watching this video and thinking, why can't I use paint? So you probably all have acrylic paint at home and you could use it, but the trouble with paint is that it would dry pretty much instantly once you've rolled it up. So we're, we're actually rolling up a nice thin slab of ink. If that was paint, it'd be dry before you were able to even pull an impression. So with my roller, obviously with my fork facing up, you don't want that having to be face down, otherwise you're going to scratch your glass. So face up and then just really carefully, you're rolling out that ink. You want to get a really nice coverage on your roller and it should be nice and smooth. Should have a slightly sticky sound to it. Once you've got that prepared, you'll grab your feather, deciding which side you actually want to put your ink on and you'll probably find that you'll need to hold the feather with one hand or a finger from one hand and then you're laying the ink down with the roller with the other. So carefully run your ink along the feather. And you're really trying to pick up all the marks on the feather. 
so that they will leave an impression on the paper. While you're rolling that up, Janet, one yep. thing I think might be worth mentioning to everyone while they're rolling up their slab is to lift your roller every time you roll backwards and forwards. See how I'm rolling and I'm rolling back and I'm letting the roller roll on itself? If you just do this, you're just going to get line after line. You're not going to get a nice smooth slab. So you've really got to lift your roller up, even if it's a small one, just like Janet's doing now. Yep, so lifting and then rolling. So I'm going to get my next feather, place that down in the same spot, and again, laying my ink down carefully onto that feather. If you need a little bit more ink, you just go back to your slab and pick some more up on your roller. And again, still holding it with one hand. Place my feathers down on the glass tabletop where I'm going to place my paper for printing. I'm adding a little bit more ink now for my third feather. Moving that into position. You will find that your hands get a little bit inky, but because it is a water-based ink, we can easily just wash them off. That's good. Placing my feathers down. So my next step is to have my paper ready. The other thing that you might have noticed is that I've got a mask on my table here. That is a registration area of where my paper is going to sit within that frame. So if I place my paper down within that frame, along the edges of the masking tape, and then with my baron, carefully pushing down so that I'm getting an impression from each of those feathers. You will have to hold things in place because your feathers from underneath are probably going to start moving slightly if you don't. So I'm making sure with the baron that I'm really getting into the grooves of that feather and around it as well. I don't need to go over the whole paper because my feathers are just in one spot. The other thing you could try, if you didn't have a baron, but you had, you had two rollers and you're only rolling one up with ink, you could even try applying pressure with a clean roller to the back too because th these are nice smooth rubbery rollers so all you're trying to do is get a nice, as much pressure as you can over the, over the object. What do you think that you might be finished using your baron and getting the impression off the onto the paper? You can just have a little peek at it and see if the impression is leaving on your paper. So far it looks pretty good. I'm actually going to release that. Beck's going to help me. She'll hold the feathers down as I peel that off. You'll find it's a little bit sticky. So it is good to have someone help you, but you could possibly do this on your own. And then as you'll see, we now have a print from our feathers. So if I give that to you, Beck, and you yep. can place that down for somewhere to dry. You'll also find now that you have an impression left on the glass tabletop. You could get another print off of that if you wanted to by putting some paper on there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll out some ink and just show you another quick technique that you can use from that area. So this time I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use a bit more of that ink. So I'm going to get my little baby roller and spread that ink out a bit. You can make this as neat as you want to or as rough as you want to. I'm not gonna make it too perfectly neat because I just wanna show you a quick method. So I'm gonna add a little bit more ink to that. So I'll take a little bit more out of the container. Spread that along my glass tabletop and again, just spreading that ink out. Trying to get it fairly even across the table or across, across my glass slab.
You might even find that you want to have it lighter around the edges and darker in the centre. So it's up to you about how you spread it. You might even find that you want to have some of those roller marks showing a little bit. So if we just spread it so that you can see them and they will print. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do some painterly methods on this slab that I have here. So I could pick up a little piece of cardboard and just wipe some areas away. Do you want me to spray it? Yeah, and then Beck will add another method to this by putting a spritz of water onto the slab. And you'll see the effect that has once we print it. So I'm also going to add a little bit of colour. I might just pick up a brush and we've got a little bit of green ink here that we're going to add to this. We've also got some water on there now so this is going to help with how that spreads. You don't want to make your, the ink that you're adding too thick though because it will just bleed out unless of course that's the effect that you're after. You could also add some of that ink into an area where I haven't actually wiped away and you'll see the difference. The other thing that you could do is you could get a rag that's got a little bit of water on it and with your finger just take some of that area out. It might be slightly different than what it was when we wiped it with the card. You can have a whole lot of different colours going in this. It's up to you about how you want to work it. And the other method we want to show you, if we put the paper down now ready to print, and as you'll see, that's going to fit within the frame that we used on the earlier monoprint with the feathers, and we'll place that down. And just gently, we'll rub our hand over it to make sure it's secure to the bench. And then if we pick up a uh, brush, we can use the back of that. Beck, do you want to show the method with that? So this is about, so now you can see that the paper's laid on top of the ink slab, but we haven't applied pressure everywhere. So you've only got the pressure points of the paper where it's sitting on the ink, where it's going to pull the ink off. If you now apply pressure, you can do it with a tool, you can do it with your fingers even. Wherever you apply pressure, you're going to be uh, pulling ink onto that surface. So um, you could do it, I don't know, so shapes with a sharp tool or just to showcase what you can do with your fingers, you can also apply finger marks and soft, soft marks. Or, so you get that sort of contrast of the different types of mark making. I don't know what I've done now, it's all just so We'll have a look. So the other thing we can do again, we can just carefully peel that off and have a look and see how much pressure we've got on there. Okay, so you can see the marks from all the different things that we've done there. And so those are the sort of sharper marks that we, we did with the paintbrush tool, and then I think that would be my hand mark. Yeah. And then we could actually apply another piece of paper. Another piece of paper. So this is why it's called model printing completely. You can only pull one of the, you can't create um, exact reproductions of this process so you can just but you can use the same slab and apply variations on a, on a theme so now you could just use the baron so just going to put some pressure onto that slab and hopefully pick up a second print from that we usually call that second print a ghost print and that is because it's less amount of ink that's coming off onto the paper on that second run so just to recap you can alter the ink slab to pull an impression or you can alter the pressure that you're putting on the back of the paper to take a different impression of the same ink slab. So we'll carefully peel that off again just from the corner. So you'd probably even get a third print off of that if you wanted to. So now if you wanted to clean that off, you could add another ink, you could keep working that surface and then take another impression, or you could take one of your prints that you've just pulled and put it back on top and take a second impression on the same sheet too. 
So now I'm going to show you another process where you can be using stencils to make some monoprints. So I'm going to switch places with you, Beck. And uh, I'm going to clean up in the background so you can see how easy it is to clean up this water basin. So for this, I'm actually going to use a piece of wood. Any wood is fine. This one's got a nice grain on it. You don't have to use a piece of wood. You could use a piece of perspex again, but the wood will pick up the grain, which is what I'm after. The other thing that we've done is we've put two loops of masking tape on the back of the block and that will make it stick to the table so that when I'm actually rolling it up, it's not going to move around. So just press them firmly in place. Then with my roller, I'm actually using a larger roller this time, which is called a brayer, but you can again use your speedball rollers. They're great for this. So Beck's actually laid out a really nice slab of ink for me here. It's exactly, exactly the same as before, where you take the ink out of the container, you give it a bit of a massage, you then make a line of ink across the table or across your slab and rolling it out. So as you can see from this, it's actually really nice and flat. It doesn't sound too sticky. If you put too much ink on the slab, you'll end up with too much on your block and then when you print, it'll start to bleed. So with my roller, making sure I've got space around the area, that I'm not going to roll into, I'm just carefully placing the ink onto that slab. It's going to take a little bit of ink and you'll need to roll over it a fair few times to get it fairly even. I'll come back to my slab and pick up some more ink. And you can do that as many times as you need to to actually get a good coverage onto your wooden block or your perspex block. If you feel like it needs a little bit more ink on the roller, you can just pick up a little bit more from the table and add it onto your slab. Have you got so enough try and, I think I've got enough there, we should be fine. Try and make it fairly even as you're spreading that. Always have your forks facing up so that you're not scratching the table and roll that out. You'll find the first time you roll up the block, it'll absorb a lot of ink. But then every subsequent print, when you go back to re-roll your block, it will take less and less ink to roll that up. So again, just getting that nice and even. I want to also see the grain that's on that wood, so I don't want to overload the block with too much ink, otherwise I'll lose that beautiful grain that's there. When you're finished, you place your roller back down on its forks. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pick up my block and you can actually put these loops of masking tape into the area for registration and that way it'll stop it from moving around again while you're trying to release the ink onto the paper. Thanks, Beck. So once again, I'm placing that down. What I've done here, I've made a registration area and my block is sitting in the center and then I've just put a mark with a, a texter or a Sharpie around the edge for where my print or the paper is gonna sit. So placing that in to that area. And now I've got these stencils that we cut earlier. So I'm gonna place that down onto the block. So what's gonna happen, the print will pick up the ink around the outside, but where my stencil is sitting, there won't be any ink. So that'll be the color of the paper. I'm gonna put that on a slight angle. The other thing I'm gonna do, I've got these circles that we cut from the stencil. And I've also cut one just out of a piece of acetate. And now I'm gonna ink that up. You can also put a loop of masking tape onto that so that it's not gonna roll around on the bench while I'm trying to ink it. So the, the purpose of this is it's going to sit inside that circle area so that I'm gonna get a third color. I'm gonna have the green background, the white of the stencil, and then this lighter green that I'm gonna use that will sit in the center here. So Beck's kindly mixed up some ink for me and we've just put it on a little speedball roller which is all we need because it's a small area. And I'm just rolling that up. So as you can see, the masking tape's holding that to the table, which is exactly what I want. And I want to get a really good coverage on that. So again, I might need to pick up a little bit more ink. Oh, 
Always make sure that it's really even so that you'll get an even print. Carefully lift that, getting your nail underneath it. Now when I place this down, I also want the ink to be sitting facing up, facing me. I've got to get that masking tape off. Place that into the circle area. And now I've got my paper ready over here. So this is all prepared earlier. I'm placing that into where I put my Sharpie marks so that I'm going to get an even registration. Just with my hands, I'm going to press that down to make sure it's all in place. And then, Beck, if you want to give me a hand, we can either use another roller or you've got your other baron, if you yeah. want to grab that. And we're just going to get a really good pressure onto this so that we can pick up a good print. So you can see that Beck and I are both holding that paper in place so that it doesn't move while we're inking. And you can always peek. We're going to have a down little bit of a look and see what we're getting there. So we're getting something, we can probably make it a little bit darker. And you might find that you just need to, you might find that this, you haven't put enough ink on in the first place and you just take that stencil off and re-ink up your wooden block, adding more ink and as I was saying before, less ink will be absorbed and more ink will just lay on top. So you might need to do this again, but you get there in the end. So we're going to peel that off and have a look. Oh yeah, it's getting there. So we're getting there. If I lift that, and Beck, if you want to peel off. So we have our print, but with this, we could add, keep adding more and more layers. So what we could do now is we could uh, ink that block up again in another colour, place the stencil in a different spot and then continually add to it. Because we've got our registration here, it means that we can just keep adding to that print. So you want to look at this print not as a finished product, but this is one layer and you're just building and building and you experiment. You know, the whole idea of this process is that this isn't something that you repeat, but something that you can make iterations of a, th a particular theme. So this would be layer one, ink up another colour, you could even ink up the stencil, so rather than it be a mask, this is, this is a carrier of ink and it goes on top and becomes another shape. So you, you would usually pull two or three, four or five of this base layer so that you've got five options to just keep building on. So each one might end up different in the end, but it might start with a similar background. So that's just a few really quick, easy ways of making some mono print that you might be able to do at home. Thanks for watching. Thanks. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>I just wanted to show you some other mono prints that we've done at Sydney College of the Arts that are things that you could think about possibly doing. Most of these have been done using the etching presses but as we showed you earlier in um, the demonstrations you can actually do these things at home. So this one here, um, you saw the one that we did with the feathers. This is actually a whole lot of feathers. This was done by a student of ours, Janine Bailey, and the feathers were placed onto the press bed once they'd been inked up, and then the paper went down. So as you can see, it's this really beautiful array of feathers that are spreading across the paper. The other thing that you could possibly do is really make quite intricate stencil. So this has been done just with a scalpel knife um, and they're the areas that are blocking when they're printed. And if you have a look to the far of my left, you can see that word has been printed as a monoprint with these stencils. So if I just come around this side, you can see the word vanity. If you're going to use text, you need to think about having that text in reverse so that when you print it, it comes up the right way. The beautiful thing about this print is, if you have a look at this little figure that we cut, that has been placed in the center so that when the block has been inked up, that area won't actually print because the stencil's sitting on top of it. So that's something you can think about. The other nice thing with this is that this, this actually becomes a print in itself. So that little figure there is now a print as well as the stencil. The other ones that are good to look at, this one here has just got lots of little pieces of paper that have been torn up and they've been placed as a stencil when it's been printed. So where they've been placed down, no ink can get through and that is the white area from the paper that shows and everywhere else that's got the ink on it prints onto the paper. Again, um, another 
this one's actually got a couple of layers on it, as with the, the ones with the words on them as well. This one here, it's got the word perfect on it, and again, the person had to think about placing that backwards so that when it printed, it come up the right way. The other thing that this one has on it is just some string that's been inked up, so a piece of wool or a piece of string, you ink that up in one colour and then you place that onto the block so that when you print it, it comes up in that colour or you can use it as a stencil so that when you take it off, there is no colour in that area. So the ones I'm showing you have got a couple of different layers on them, that's not just a one layer monoprint, but it is about building that layer up to make a really good print. So you might not get a great print the first time, but once you build the layers up, you can end up with an amazing print. So there's just a few techniques for you to think about, as I said, doing at home, doing in the print room, and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you can actually give them a go. Thanks.